uh, the people of Zimbabwe, fellow compatriots, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to talk about the pandemic uh, that is afflicting uh, Zimbabwe uh, beyond uh, COVID. That pandemic is the pandemic of corruption, uh, the scourge of corruption. Corruption has become so key uh, and structural uh, in our country, uh, Zimbabwe. It has become easily the biggest existential threat uh, that our country uh, faces. And since the coup uh, of November 2017, corruption has become so entrenched and so deep-rooted. And the challenge with this uh, corruption is that it affects every length and breadth of Zimbabwe. It affects every sphere uh, of Zimbabwean life. It has become a huge threat uh, to people's uh, livelihoods. It has become a huge threat to the existence of Zimbabwe itself as a nation uh, state. It has become a huge tra threat to the prospects of a sustainable economic uh, uh, recovery. It is putting a premium uh, on Zimbabwe as a country. It is putting a premium on our capacity to develop and it is putting a premium uh, on our human uh, social uh, indices. As I'm talking to you right now, we are now ranked uh, by Transparency International number 160 uh, out of uh, 180. One way of expressing it is that we are the 20th most corrupt country uh, in the world. And one of the most shocking things is that we've overtaken countries that have been traditionally been associated with extraction, uh, such as uh, uh, Nigeria. And I have no doubt in my mind that with the accelerated uh, manner in which uh, corruption is being carried out in Zimbabwe. Uh, we will overtake literally every African country uh, on the uh, on our continent. Uh, I want to give you some of the uh, figures. Uh, gold alone, US 1.5 billion dollars worth of gold is being smuggled uh, annually uh, from Zimbabwe, uh, which translates to between 40 to 50 tons uh, of gold uh, that is being uh, shipped out of uh, Zimbabwe uh, illegally. Uh, the major destination is South Africa. Uh, the major destination uh, is uh, Dubai. Uh, diamonds, millions and millions uh, of carats uh, are being shipped out of uh, Zimbabwe. Even after the low levels of production that are taking place at uh, uh, Marangi. Uh, we estimated that uh, between uh, 2009 uh, and 2014, Zimbabwe lost 15 billion US dollars uh, worth of uh, diamonds illegally, a figure which uh, uh, was also confirmed uh, by the late President uh, Robert Mugabe. In our estimation, the figure is much, much uh, bigger uh, than uh, 15 billion dollars. We are losing around US one billion dollars uh, through cigarette uh, smuggling uh, done by a cartel which I'll mention uh, later on. So we are essentially losing around three billion US dollars uh, with uh, of resources uh, through uh, corruption uh, in uh, uh, in resources. Uh, and this excludes what we are losing in the form of illicit uh, financial uh, flows, I, you know, IFFs. Uh, globally, Africa loses around $86.6 billion in the form of uh, illicit financial uh, flows. Zimbabwe is contributing anything between 4 to $5 billion uh, US dollars uh, of that uh, figure. Uh, what concerns me is that a large part of Zimbabwe's uh, hemorrhage and leakage is also actually coming now uh, through treasure, through central uh, uh, government. We know from the audited statements of the Auditor General 
uh, that uh, 2.7 billion US dollars uh, was stolen and lost directly through treasury in 2017. 3.5 billion US dollars was lost directly through treasury in 2018. And the recently released audit report of 2019 shows a loss of 7.6 billion US dollars uh, lost uh, through uh, a treasury. So in three years, uh, over and above the budget deficit, around 14 billion US dollars has been lost through the Ministry uh, of Finance. And this is concerning because the Ministry of Finance traditionally is an oversight ministry. It is a gatekeeper. So it beholds the mind when the gatekeeper becomes uh, the principal uh, get a, a, a crusher. And I need to say that beyond this 14 billion US dollars, Parliament right now has before it, pending before it, a financial adjustment bill in respect of which the executive, the government of the day, is seeking condonation uh, of uh, the sum of 10.6 billion US dollars that was again lost uh, 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 through Treasury between 2015 and 2017. So between 2015 and 2019, Zimbabwe has lost 10.6 billion US dollars accounted for by the financial adjustment bill, then 14 billion US dollars in the uh, 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 form of uh, 2.7 billion dollars lost in 2017, 3.5 billion dollars lost in 2018, and uh, 7.6 billion dollars lost in 2019. Uh, there is more in 2020. There is more in 20 uh, in 2019. So the bottom line is that Zimbabwe has essentially become a criminal enterprise. Zimbabwe has essentially become a mafia uh, 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 state. Zimbabwe has become, essentially become a criminal uh, enterprise, a kakistocracy. Those that are presiding over the state are essentially engaged uh, 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 in the total emasculation uh, of Zimbabwe to ensure the continued reproduction of extractive relations and rent-seeking behavior. Uh, and two things matter to those that are running our country, uh, namely the power retention agenda. They will do anything for the purposes of uh, power retention, including stealing elections, uh, killing people, as we saw on the 1st of August uh, 2018, uh, killing people, uh, raping people, as we saw in January uh, 2019, the masculation of uh, uh, civic society, the masculation and dis dismantlement of the official opposition, the MDC uh, 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 alliance, the arrest of civic activists, a journalist like Wopo Chimono and, and, and so forth. But power is inextricably connected uh, with, with, with looting. Whereas under President Mugabe, uh, it was power for the sake of power. Uh, under Emerson Mnangagwa, power is a means to an end. And that end is extraction. That end is uh, looting. Uh, that end is uh, 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 you know, you know, you know, you know, corruption. There is a key characteristic of those that are looting, which has been brilliantly been exposed by two reports uh, that have just uh, come out. And I need to say that there are four sets of documents uh, that anyone interested in this subject uh, ought to read. The first one are the report by the Auditor General from 2014 uh, to 2019, uh, being the last uh, report. Uh, the, second sets of, the second set of source documents are the reports coming from uh, Parliament and these portfolio committees. In particular, the reports by the Public Accounts uh, Committee, uh, which we have done, the report on the Central Bank, the report on the Ministry of Finance, uh, the report on uh, Zinara, uh, the forthcoming report on Command Agriculture. Those should be read. Uh, the report by various other portfolio committees, including the reports by the Minister of Agriculture, uh, sorry, by the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture and the Portfolio Committee on Transport, uh, which have all exposed uh, the massive omissions and commissions uh, in this government. The two reports uh, done by external researchers, one has been done by ARC uh, and it's called uh, Cartel Power, Dynamics in Zimbabwe. Uh, it was done and published by the Daily Maverick 
in January of 2021. Uh, that report must be read by anyone uh, seriously interested in the subject of corruption in Zimbabwe. The second report, a very powerful report, is the report uh, produced by the central organization headed Shadows and Shell Games, uncovering an offshore business empire in Zimbabwe. What these reports brilliantly show is the fact that the corruption in Zimbabwe is now inextricably connected to international extraction, to international uh, money, money laundering. So Zimbabwe has become a key hub uh, of international uh, money uh, laundering. Much of the money that is being siphoned from Zimbabwe is being housed in the offshore resort of uh, Mauritius. And I would like to argue that uh, uh, key financial Mauritian financial institutions are essentially Zimbabwean uh, institutions uh, which are housing uh, illegal uh, 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 illicit uh, flows uh, from Zimbabwe. So too the Cayman uh, Islands and to a very small extent uh, 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 Switzerland. So we need an international response to the crisis of corruption in Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean authorities in the form of the Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, the National Prosecuting Authorities are not equal uh, to the task of dismantling the international structures uh, of illicit financial flows and extraction uh, that are now uh, essentially uh, harbored and uh, originating in Zimbabwe, but with huge international uh, tentacles uh, in places such as Belarus, uh, places such as uh, Russia, uh, places such as uh, South Africa, uh, places such as uh, uh, Switzerland, places such as uh, Singapore, places such as uh, Dubai, uh, places such as uh, India for our diamonds, places such as uh, Hong Kong, places such as uh, 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 China, uh, which are so key uh, in the aspect of extracting uh, loot uh, from Zimbabwe. And one of the, and if you do a comparison, of the key characters that are looting uh, Zimbabwe, and I'm going to mention them. Uh, and you compare uh, some international looters that we've lived with, people like Suharto, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Mar the Marcos uh, regime in, in, uh, in uh, the Philippines. The key challenge with Zimbabwe is that it's dominated by roving bandits. Now, there's a difference between roving bandits and stationary uh, bandits. Stationary bandits are like uh, Suharto. Stationary bandits are like uh, Marcos. They will steal, but they will make sure that the economy and the citizen also benefits. The challenge with Zimbabwe's roving bandits is that they leave nothing for the ordinary average individual. They leave nothing uh, for Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe is extremely poor, yet it's generating billions and billions uh, of, of dollars. It's only them and their children uh, who are eating as it were. It's only them and their children who are benefiting. And we see the results of their children eating. Their children are driving vehicles that, are, that cost 4 million US dollars, 5 million US dollars. If you go to Sam Levis village, uh, you see Lamborghinis being driven there. You see Ferraris uh, being driven there. All kinds of luxury uh, vehicles in Zimbabwe. Yet, 79% of our people are living in extreme poverty, surviving on less than US $1.25 a day. Thousands of Zimbabwe are now dying through COVID because the government has failed to provide social safety nets and grants uh, to our people. Uh, our human resources index have collapsed. Uh, our maternal mortality rates are now, uh, are now uh, uh, 96 out of 1,000 mothers. Our infant mortality rates uh, are now 102 out of a, a, a thousand. In the last two years, teachers have not gone to school because they're being paid uh, peanuts. In the last two years, nurses have hardly gone to school uh, because they're being paid peanuts. The public health system has collapsed. The public uh, transport system has collapsed. The public education system has collapsed uh, thanks to, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, to the roving bandits we have. So the difference between a roving bandit and a stationary bandit is that the stationary bandit will milk 
six barrels of milk. You will steal two and leave four for the population. The roving bandits will milk six barrels of uh, milk. You will steal those six jugs of milk. You also steal the cow uh, so that there is no milk to be milked uh, from a cow. And that's the biggest challenge with Zimbabwe. It's full of uh, roving bandits. Now I want to talk about the commanding heights of this corruption. They are essentially a, a nine commanding heights of corruption. In other words, nine football pitches where corruption is panning out and where corruption is being played out. The first one is of course the US dollar and access to the US dollar which inevitably makes the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe a commanding height of corruption. The second one is fuel, the third one is command agriculture, the fourth one is mining, the fifth one is the transport sector, the, the sixth one is treasure, the Ministry of Finance, uh, the seventh one is public procurement uh, contracts. The eighth one is uh, cigarettes. Uh, the ninth one uh, is substance. And I want to talk briefly uh, about uh, these uh, commanding heights uh, of corruption. The, the government of national units dollarized the economy. And in the process, it decommodified the U.S. dollar. Uh, this, the U.S. dollar became plentiful and aboundful. It became the major currency of trade uh, in Zimbabwe. It became the major instrument uh, of trade uh, in Zimbabwe. When we introduced the U.S. dollar, it killed the arbitrage that the Zimbabwean dollar had been subjected to through speculative behavior and manipulation of the exchange uh, rate. This regime in 2016 introduced a surrogate currency called the bond note. And once you introduced a fiat currency, a, 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 a bad money chases a good money. So in no time at all, the dominant currency of the day became the bond note or the RTGS. So in no time at all, the parallel exchange rate had returned. In February of 2019, the government introduced SI 33 of 2019, uh, which officially uh, recognized uh, the existence of an RTG as a dollar of a local currency, which also partially liberalized uh, this uh, dollar. It uh, allowed it to defloat from the fixed exchange rate of 1 is to 1. In June of 2019, the government of the day in, uh, uh, enacted such an instrument 142 of 2019, which officially uh, uh, de-dollarized the economy. It made the Zimbabwean dollar the sole currency of exchange uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. But of course, that created arbitrage. It created massive arbitrage in that the economy was trading in US dollars. And there is no economy that is traded in US dollars there is no economy that is involuntarily uh, dollarized that has been able to de-dollarize. It's, it's just logic. It's a question of uh, trust. So a, a huge parallel market then emerged, which at the present moment, as I'm talking to, the official, uh, uh, sorry, the unofficial parallel exchange rate is one is to 150 uh, or one is to uh, or one is to 55. In other words, to purchase one US dollar, you require around 150 uh, units of the local currency. Yet the official exchange rate determined by uh, the weekly Dutch auction system is around 1 is to 84, 1 is to 85. So there is a huge chasm, a huge premium of over 60% between the official exchange rate uh, and the unofficial parallel market exchange rate. What this means is that those that are able to access 
a foreign currency through official channels, i.e. the Reserve Bank, either through the a formal auction system or through informal channels at the Reserve Bank, are able to access money cheaply, uh, sometimes at 1 is to 1, sometimes now at 1 is to 84, which they are then able to go and sell in the paro market at 1 is to uh, uh, 150 uh, or 160 or 130, whatever is the parallel exchange rate. And so you now have a huge coterie of people connected to the ZANU PF regime, connected to the head of state, connected to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the reserve bank, who are accessing a uh, foreign currency from the reserve bank and selling it at a premium uh, on the black market in Fourth Street. And one of the amazing things you will see is that all the currencies you buy from the paro market, they are actually crispy, brand new notes indicating that they are being supplied uh, by, the, by the Reserve Bank. So the Reserve Bank has essentially become the biggest trader uh, on Fourth Street, uh, the, the, on Rootport, uh, the paro uh, market. Uh. So that means that the economy is bleeding because of the existence of a parallel market, or more importantly, because of this artificial uh, rigged exchange rate. And this rigged exchange rate has now become an instrument of transferring resources from the poor to the rich. The poor are forced to source their money uh, from the black market. If they get a few dollars sent by the diaspora, and by the way, Zimbabwe receives about US $1 billion in the annually in the form of diaspora remittances. They then sell that money uh, on the parallel exchange. But when they go into shops, officially, they are forced to trade it at 1 is to, uh, at one is to 84. Yet they can't access uh, resources on the auction uh, floor. So the parallel auction system is now transferring money from the poor to the rich. So you take workers, the average worker, the average civil servant, used to earn US $500 during the time of the GNU. He is now earning US $35 to $40. When he goes into a supermarket, he is now buying goods that are indexed in real terms at the official or the unofficial paro market rate. And if he decides to, to buy a US dollar, he has to go to a black market rate where he has to pay US $1 to 150 and then go into a shop where that US dollar is now being discounted at US. One is to 85. So it's a serious form of popularizing uh, the people of Zimbabwe. I want to come to fuel. Fuel is inextricably linked uh, to abuse of foreign currency. You've got fuel cartels that are controlling uh, Zimbabwe. The biggest is, of course, Kudata Gwire and Sakunda, uh, and their partner in crime, uh, Trafigura, uh, which is a Russian entity uh, based in Switzerland. Then you have got the Zula uh, group. Then you have got uh, uh, other small players uh, uh, like Trek, also owned by uh, Kudata Gwire, uh, like Engine and Total. Now the big players, uh, the Kudata Gwire of this world, will go to the Reserve Bank and source foreign currency at 1 is to 1 or at the official auction rate at, of 1 is to 84 then they are able to sell that money acquired uh, from the reserve bank at 1 to 84, they will be able to sell it for a premium on the parallel exchange rate, where they will get hundreds and thousands and millions of RTGs in local currency. They then go back and buy their original foreign currency at 1 to 84. So you find that uh, the fuel companies are major players on the parallel exchange rate including Secunda. And we know this because in June of 2019, the Reserve Bank, sorry, in July of 2019, the Reserve Bank actually officially closed uh, Secunda's uh, accounts in their many uh, companies. And I'm going to read out uh, some of these uh, companies. Uh, speaking of Secunda and its incestuous relationship with uh, foreign currency, I want to mention what happened in 2019. So in January 2019, the Minister of Finance gave to Secunda U.S. backed treasury bills 
in the sum of US $360 million. That was in January of 2019. In February of 2019, the Reserve Bank introduced SI33 of 2019, which effectively meant that if you were holding a treasury bill indexed in US dollar, that treasury bill was now effectively an RTGS dollar uh, exchangeable at 1 is to 1. So in the case of Secunda, if you were holding a treasury bill with US $360 million, uh, come 23 February 2019, you are now effectively holding a treasury bill with a 360, a Zimbab 360 million Zimbabwean dollars or RTGS dollars. Now, everyone suffered, everyone who was holding a, a treasury bills suffered. And Zimbabwe was able to devalue its stock of domestic debt from around US $12 billion to a mere a, 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 a $12 billion RTGS dollar through the stroke of a pen through structural instrument 33 of 2019. But of course Kuda is special, Secunda is special, they are well connected. So what Kuda managed to do was to force the Reserve Bank to discount uh, his treasury bill of US $360 million through parallel market uh, rates. So, and of course, he got some of the money in US dollars. And once he got this money, he was able to go and trade that money uh, on the parallel exchange rate. The net result was that the Zimbabwean dollar collapsed from 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 25 in one day in July uh, of 2019. Because suddenly the system finds itself with around $3 billion that was coming from the $360 million uh, that could have been really had. So there is an incest between the cartels and their access to foreign currencies. If you were to do an audit of the of the beneficiaries of foreign currents since the Dutch auction system started in June of 2019, you actually find that the people who have benefited are the who's who of the cartels, save that they've been clever, they use uh, different shelf uh, companies, and you have to go, you have to piece the veil to go behind in order to determine uh, who are those uh, uh, companies. So fuel is a major source of uh, patronage uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, Kudata Gwirei and Traffic Gura control the pipeline. And we are paying Zimbabwean motorists. Zimbabwean fuel is the most expensive on the continent because we are paying huge levies in the form of a Noxim uh, debt redemption uh, levy. If you were to remove that levy uh, and if you were removed to remove the carbon tax, Zimbabwean fuel will actually be comparable uh, to the region. So you have Kuda controlling the pipeline and every fuel that comes through Zimbabwe has to pass through uh, that pipeline. Then he is now effectively controlling a uh, NOIC uh, or a petrol trade. A petrol trade. He is now effectively also the dominant player in the retail uh, sector uh, through his secunda service stations, through uh, his uh, Puma service stations, his Trek uh, service stations, and then of course you've got Zuba and Glencoe uh, and. Um, uh, the highest office in the land, uh, all connected uh, in this incestuous uh, uh, relationship. Over and above hydrocarbons, you've got Billy Rottenbeck and his ethanol. Uh, a, a structural instrument was passed in 2013, which made clear that only a person in a joint venture agreement uh, with Zimbabwe apply ethanol. So you find that Billy Rottenbeck is supplying ethanol to Zimbabwe at a total cost of U.S. $1.10 or $1.20. If Zimbabwe were to import ethanol from the biggest ethanol producing country in the world, uh, Brazil or the United States of America or a Scandinavian country, it would lend FOB at US 50 cents. But we are paying a premium to Billy Rittenbeck of US $1.10 to US $1.20. So fuel is a major source of arbitrage. Uh, in Zimbabwe. The third source of arbitrage is of course command agriculture. 
Now I've spoken, we've spoken about Commander Agriculture for a long time and I will not uh, spend a lot of time on it. Suffice to state that the resources that have been channeled by this government to command agriculture amount to 10% of gross domestic product. In real terms, at least 1.5 billion to 2 billion US dollars is channeled to command agriculture uh, every year. If you look at the 2.7 billion dollars I spoke in 20, to, for 2017, the 3.5 billion dollars I spoke in 2018, and the $7.6 billion I spoke for, of in 2019, the bulk of that is command agriculture. And command agriculture has become a vehicle of stealing resources from the state, from treasury, into elites, uh, ZANU PF elites. So you find vehicles, luxury vehicles, with nothing to do with the uh, uh, command agriculture have been bought. You actually find that uh, the 2018 ZANU PF uh, uh, financed the 2018 election through uh, command uh, agriculture. Uh, Minister Chinamasa issued a flurry of treasury bills in July of 2018 and in, uh, and in August, I think 10th of August uh, of 2018. All this was to finance uh, the ZANU-PF uh, election. So command agriculture had become pernicious. In 2020, they, used, they hid it through a commercial bank and they're pretending that the commercial bank is in fact dispersing its money. That is not true. Uh, the commercial bank in question is actually getting money from treasury, which it is pretending to lend out uh, to, the, to farmers. So command agriculture is pernicious and command agriculture uh, must be uh, done away with. Uh, and we have a market-based system uh, of financing our agriculture. If we have to offer them subsidies, let's offer supply side uh, subsidies, not demand side uh, subsidies. The next form of corruption or commanding height of corruption is the mining sector. And this is, a, uh, this is a serious. Uh, in the last three years, Kudata Girei, through uh, two or three companies, Landela Mining and Sotic Investments, which he controls, He's acquired over 11 gold mines. These, and five of them, six of them, came from the ZMTC. Parliament was not involved. Nobody knows how much they cost. And he has also acquired mines that were also owned by uh, Metallion, uh, Mozi Kumar. So these mines are now hidden in a vehicle called uh, uh, Kovimba Mine. Uh, but they're essentially Kudata Gwire's uh, mines. And these mines include uh, Friedari Baker Mine, Ao Mine, Shamva Mine, Red Ring Mine, uh, uh, Jena Mine, Akriconton Mine, Sabi Mine, Ao Mine, Golden Crop Mine, and Sandawana Mine. Extensive uh, mines, uh, if you were to ask me. Uh, details of this you will find in our various parliamentary reports, but you also find them in the report shadows in the uh, 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 shell game. Uh, over and above these uh, mines, uh, they've also acquired uh, Zim alloys, they've also acquired the Bindura uh, nickel uh, 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 mine, uh, uh, and again, Parliament is not involved, uh, so public assets are being stripped uh, without Parliament uh, uh, being involved. With Zim Alloys, as a matter of fact, the money that was used to purchase those shares actually came from Treasure. But we don't know how uh, uh, Secunda Holdings through Landela ended up being portrayed uh, as the owner of uh, those uh, mines. So there is need for a forensic audit to determine the movement of uh, resources from Treasure to Landela or Sotik. Yet, the people of Zimbabwe are not getting in the team uh, these, uh, these mines. A forensic uh, audit uh, is uh, uh, required. I want to talk about gold. As I've indicated before, we are losing about 40 to 50 tons of gold that are being smuggled uh, every year. Uh, Minister of uh, Police of Home Affairs 
Kazembe, Kazembe estimates that around 1.5 billion US dollars is being lost in gold alone. The chairperson of the Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, Justice uh, Matanda Moyo, actually estimates that uh, it's much more than that. It's 3 billion US dollars. Judged by the amount of little smugglings that we have seen of people being caught in Yedreta Shuaya, Rushwaya, the gentleman that was caught with the 25 kilograms of gold at Oara International Airport, uh, we think that uh, at least 3 billion US dollars or 50 tons uh, of gold is being lost uh, annually through smuggling. We are aware that there's a big man in Zimbabwe who smuggles gold twice uh, a month, so twice twice a week uh, from, from, from Zimbabwe in the little aeroplane lands at Harare International Airport twice a week to smuggle gold uh, to to Dubai, uh, and Dubai has become a major center uh, of uh, gold uh, uh, smuggling in Zimbabwe. They've also liberalized the gold, so some people have now been given private licenses uh, of acquiring gold from artisanal workers, makorokozas, and also actually selling gold. So the monopoly of the reserve bank through fidelity has actually been decimated again to encourage. Uh, illicit financial flows to encourage uh, looting of Zimbabwe. Uh, another center of looting is, is become platinum uh, resources. Uh, every platinum resource, every platinum concession, other than the ones that are owned by the big guys, uh, including uh, Zimra, sorry, uh, uh, Zimplats, are now owned by this company called GDI Investments. GDI is owned uh, by a Russian entity and by Kuda uh, Takwire. He bought uh, the, those interests from the, from the military in Zimbabwe for a purchase price of over US $220 million. Uh, 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 dollars. And so GDI is now sitting on millions and millions of ounces uh, of, um, uh, of uh, uh, platinum resources. Uh, they've also been granted in January of 2021, they were granted serious tax concessions uh, by Treasury and I hope uh, uh, the, the, the law society uh, will challenge uh, these pernicious uh, levels of state capture uh, to do with uh, GDI. Diamonds, uh, I've, I can speak for diamonds for the whole day, uh, $15 billion, but we know that even up to now, uh, over 2 million carats uh, of diamonds are being produced every day, uh, but uh, uh, nothing is being uh, done. Uh, another, another commanding height of corruption, which I didn't mention in my original list, is obviously land. Land has become a major commanding height of corruption, both urban land and rural land. With regards to rural land, multiple farm owners that were dealt with by the land reform program have now been replaced by multiple leases to white farmers. So in provinces such as Mashonaland West, in provinces such as Mashonaland East, in provinces such as Manikaland, there is now the return of white capital in the form of cereal multiple uh, farm leases who are obviously paying a uh, rent uh, to ZANU PF elites who were allocated uh, this uh, land. So for all intents and purposes, the land reform program has been uh, reversed and President Mugabe, may his soul rest in peace, is surely turning uh, in his uh, grave. Part of the looting also involves the $3.5 billion dollar agreement to compensate uh, white uh, farmers. In principle, it's a constitutional obligation to compensate white farmers uh, for improvements. So no one can quarrel about that constitutional obligation. The problem is that contrary to the provisions of the constitution, parliament did not approve the methodology and the amount. And so parliament does not know the beneficiaries Parliament does not know which farmer is going to get what. So, as usual, this 
3.5 billion dollars a huge chunk of this money is going to end up in the same zanu pf elites that have been looting uh, our 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 country then you've got urban land urban land is now dominated by land barons connected to the uh, ruling uh, party uh, the authorities themselves have spoken out against these uh, huge land barons that have acquired massive pieces of land. The biggest land baron, as far as uh, urban land is concerned, is a man called Kenneth Royden uh, Sharp, who operates through the guise of a company called Ogre Investments. He acts through dubious agreements executed with the city of Harare, one to do with the construction of the Harare Airport Road, uh, one to do with the development called Sunshine, in respect of which he undertook to, de to, to provide development capital uh, and he failed. But Gotland, uh, thousands and thousands of hectares have been, uh, have been extracted, which are now being uh, sold to unsuspecting members uh, of the public. Uh, so that's a huge, uh, huge source uh, of arbitrage, uh, the land question the agrarian question in Zimbabwe. Now, the land question now involves huge tracts of land that are being taken from uh, communal occupiers, peasant farmers. We've seen the attempt by the government to dispossess the Shangani, the Tlengwe Shangani people in Chilonga. We've seen the further attempts to displace the Ndawu people in Chipinge. Uh, Billy Rottenberg wants to expand his sugar estate we have seen massive extraction of land in Wange, where Chinese are now uh, mining in national uh, parks. So the land question is back again. As it was in 1890, the land question and land has become a major source of extraction 40 years, uh, 41 years after independence. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a shame. So if Sister John Rhodes were to wake up today, you'll be in good company. Good company in the form of the present day government. Good company in the form of Billy Rottenberg could come in the form of Kenneth uh, Royden uh, Sharp. I want to come to transport. Transport is a major source of extraction. I urge uh, uh, compatriots to read the report presented to Parliament by the Public Accounts Committee uh, on Zinara. So here you've got major cartels. One of the major cartels is a company called Univen that is owned by a man called Lawrence Shea. Uh, he uh, uh, disingenuously supplied software to Zinara uh, and then pretended that this software was a triple P, was a public private entity. So as a result, he's getting 22 cents out of every dollar that is paid when someone when you pay for your vehicle license. He's getting 18 cents out of a dollar out of a, any target fee. Then he's getting uh, uh, the inter a border transportation fee. It's not fair on the people of Zimbabwe. So every year is getting around 140 million US dollars. Yet look at the state of our road. So Zinara right now is its tents. Essentially exists to work for Univen and Lawrence Shea. Uh, that is not fair. And as that report says, those agreements were executed illegally. Uh, they must be uh, cancelled. Another form of corruption is Zupko. So the government of the day, through Statutory Instrument 83 of 2020, using the excuse of COVID, has now created a monopoly uh, for Zupko. But Zupko has, in fact, been taken over by Kudata Grey in the Secunda. Zupko has received over 200 buses supplied by Landela Ventures, sourced from Belarus. Those buses are, are acquired at around 40,000, 58,000, yet they are being sold in excess of $200,000 uh, to the CMAD and to Zupko. So this has become a major uh, source of uh, looting. Contracts, private uh, contracts, massive contracts are being dished out left, right and center without going to tender. These include contracts that have been issued to five companies that are in the process of rehabilitating the Bait Bridge Harare Road. Uh, one of the, those same contractors was given the contract to construct the Mbuyani and uh, statute. We have no problem with that, but please follow the law, uh, go to tender. So massive contracts are now being dished out 
uh, without uh, going to tender. So you now see the emergence of tenderpreneurs uh, in, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. Then cigarettes. You have a man called Simon uh, Radland and the Radland family. Uh, you have a company called uh, Pacific uh, Cigarettes that is owned by a man called Adam Molai. The levels of transfer pricing, the levels of invoicing, the levels of crude, uh, crude uh, smuggling are huge, uh, and and Simon Radland is at the center, uh, at the center uh, of, 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 of 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 this, and then the commanding heights. Uh, but the key players are Kudata Gwire. Kudata Gwire has got an array of companies. He's into everything: banking agriculture, uh, hospitals, uh, chemicals, finance, and so forth. And his array of companies, some at home, some abroad, include Takutata, PTY Limited, South Africa, East Africa Supply and Trading, PTY Limited, South Africa, Suzaku Investment, PTY Limited, South Africa, African Connection Logistics, SI, PTY Limited, South Africa, ACL Bulk Packaging Solutions, PTY Limited South Africa, Red Fox Management, PTY Limited South Africa, Sotic South Africa, PTY Limited South Africa, Bell Site Investments uh, Private Limited Zimbabwe, Bill Heights Investments Private Limited Zimbabwe, Bionist Investments Private Limited Zimbabwe, Landela Investments Private Limited Zimbabwe, Landela Mining Ventures Private Limited Zimbabwe, Landela Infrastructure Private Limited Zimbabwe, Secunda Holdings Private Limited Zimbabwe, Caladrias Investments uh, Zimbabwe, Sotic International Limited Zimbabwe. Then missing from these are the banks he owns. Missing from this is the asset management company uh, he owns. The list is extensive. Uh, the list is huge. But of course there's White Capital, Bailey Rottenberg, John Bredenkamp, uh, Z uh, Coronadis, uh, Lawrence Shea, Kenneth Michael Rodan. So in the top 10 is Rigananda. You have to put Kudata Gwire, you have to put uh, Bailey Rottenberg, you have to put uh, the Reserve Bank, you have to put, uh, you have to put Nick Van Vukstostrat, you have to put the Macmillan uh, brothers who are gold smugglers, you have to put uh, the Radland uh, families. You have to put the thousands of new multiple farm owners uh, that are now owning our land. I guess I will do a separate uh, briefing on the land question so that we unmask uh, these uh, people. What is the solution? I think the solution to we think the solution to illicit financial flows and corruption is that the UN must come up with a convention uh, that deals. Uh, with in illicit financial flows and money laundering. This convention should allow a specially created agency to look into these centers and havens of offshore uh, financing like Mauritius, the Cayman Islands, uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, 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 and other, uh, uh, you know, uh, new, uh, you know, so the Jersey Islands, uh, so that Africa does not continue uh, to bleed. If illicit financial flows were to be closed, uh, then Africa doesn't need uh, foreign aid. If Zimbabwe uh, 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 hemorrhage were to be stopped, and we were to harvest the four billion US dollars to five billion that is stolen from Zimbabwe, then we don't need uh, foreign aid. So that international protocol, that international convention is important. Number two, Zimbabwe must join the extractive industry transparent uh, front EITFF. Uh, this is so key uh, that we join uh, this EITF. Uh, third, the Anti-Corruption Commission must prosecute, must investigate uh, the National Prosecuting Authority. Prosecutions are, are key. Uh, in order to deal and dismantle the uh, tentacles of state capture in Zimbabwe. Fourth, we need new legislation. The current legislation is dwarfed 
by the developments uh, in these cartels, by the developments in the forms uh, of illicit uh, financial extraction uh, that is taking place. We need a new Mines and Minerals Act. We need a new Enhanced Anti-Money Laundering Act. Uh, uh, and we need a special task force within the Anti-Corruption Commission that is trained uh, to deal with uh, the sophisticated levels uh, of uh, uh, extractive uh, shin uh, that is taking place. Five, we need a strong parliament. Parliament is so key. Look at the work that we were doing in the Public Accounts Committee. And we're able to do that work because we understand accounting. We understand economics, we understand uh, law, we understand uh, political economy. So we need a strengthened parliament uh, to deal with uh, and to bring to book uh, the looting uh, that is uh, taking place. Uh, uh, we need public officials to comply with section 198 of the constitution. There must be public disclosures uh, of uh, people's assets. So at the beginning of the year, every member of parliament, every government minister, every director, every head of a parastatal, every employee of a parastatal, middle level to senior level, must disclose uh, their, their income, must disclose their assets. So that when we see you building a house uh, on a hill in Borodil that has got lifts and seven stories, we ask you, Mr. So-and-so, you are a mere civil servant. How are you affording to build this uh, thing? So, so public disclosure is, is important. The principles of public accountability codified in Section 9, Chapter 9 of our Constitution uh, must be complied with and followed with. Lastly, we need political change. Without political change, without free and fair elections, without a government elected by the people with legitimacy, without resolving the electoral issues, everything that I've said, uh, is a waste of time. So political change is the precondition uh, to all these things. And lastly, we need an international community that is equal to the looting that is taking place in Zimbabwe. The kind of naivety and dishonesty we have seen from the IMF uh, that they turn a blind eye to this corruption, notwithstanding that only in 2019 they actually had a mission to Zimbabwe to deal with our vulnerabilities. Yet in their latest report of 16th June, they ignored that. So we don't want dishonesty and complicity by bodies such as the IMF who are working with a very loose and complicity uh, local, a very dishonest uh, local uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, office.